Hello everyone. Today we are talking about biometric authentication. The main idea of biometrics is to provide an easier way for users to authenticate themselves. Passwords are probably not going away soon, but still most people unlock, for example, their phones with their faces or fingerprints rather than a pin. Furthermore, biometrics are a great second factor additionally to a password for multi-factor authentication. But what is biometrics and how does it work? We'll explore these questions in this video. First, I give you four examples of biometrics. We will learn later how to classify them and what problems are attached. And we have, for example, fingerprints, retina scans, face scans and walking behavior or gait. A biometric feature can be used for authentication if the following conditions are fulfilled. A feature needs to be universal. For example, you cannot use retina scanners that only work for blue-eyed people. Also, think about people in wheelchairs if you want to implement gate detection. It also needs to be unique. Authenticating someone by the color of their hair is probably not very unique. Their fingerprint, however, is. Next, it needs to be permanent, such as the retina, fingerprints and so on. Other characteristics, like the voice, changes over time. You should be ethically and practically able to collect a feature. I leave it to your imagination to think of examples where this might not be the case. From the user perspective, performance is the most important thing. If it takes forever to authenticate someone using their fingerprints, for example, users won't use it. It needs to be accepted, which is something that changes or changed rather very quickly in the last couple of years. If you ask someone 50 years ago if they are willing to provide their fingerprints to have easier access to their devices, uh, they would have probably laughed at you. Now it's commonplace. Also, we trust the manufacturers to not do any harm with the collected biometrical features, which is something we will come back to later. Circumvention finally means that it is impossible, or at least very hard, to fake the biometric feature. As you probably realized already, the biometric authentication method you are probably using right now or uh, in your daily life does not fulfill all these criteria. Usually that is because of point number five. The authentication method needs to be fast and performant in order to be accepted and are thus prone to, for example, forging fingerprints. Biometric features can be classified into two categories. First, we have physiological features such as fingerprints, your retina or your face. These features or these are features of your body, hence the name physiological. The other category are behavioral characteristics. These refer to all the things you do, such as eye movement, typing behavior, or walking behavior, also known as gait. Note that these are only examples. There are many more features for both categories. Let's now look at how authentication works. Authentication is divided into two steps. First enrollment, second validation. Enrollment works by registering your biometric feature with a database. Note that fingerprints, or or for example, fingerprints, just as we do with passwords, uh, we only store the hash uh, of the respective values and not the fingerprint itself. But for simplicity reasons, let's just assume that the biometric feature, in this case the fingerprint, is stored on the server. During validation, the user now sends his fingerprint to the server, which compares it to the stored one. If it's the same, the user is authenticated. It's the same procedure as we do with passwords. However, we have an additional complexity with biometrics. A password is either correct or wrong. A biometric feature is somewhere on the spectrum between right and wrong. This is due to the fact that we don't walk, for example, if we, do, if we use gate detection, we don't walk 100% the same every time. Also, scanners don't always capture the same portion of, for example, a fingerprint. So how exact do we have to be? Do we need to be at 70%? 80%, 95%, and the answer depends on your specific application. To understand this, we need to look at two errors we are dealing with. First, we have the false acceptance rate. This means the rate of falsely authenticated users compared to the total rate of authenticated users. And second, the false rejection rate. This basically or essentially means how many valid users did I not allow to authenticate. 
the point where these two arrows meet, and this will become apparent in a second, uh, is called the equal error rate. So now, uh, to make it more clear, we can look at uh, this in more detail in this graph. Uh, from the top left to bottom right, you see the false acceptance rate. The further we go to the right, the stricter the system becomes, and the fewer users, uh, rightfully and wrongfully, are authenticated. This sounds good. However, as you can see, the false rejection rate goes up, the same way the false acceptance rate goes down. And this is only logical, you know, if the system becomes very strict, also valid users are going to be locked out. And if we are on the left side on the graph, meaning we have a very loose system that might allow some invalid persons to authenticate, we are in the so-called comfort zone. Um, this is called this way because it provides the most comfort for all users or even valid, or valid users. Imagine, for example, trying to unlock your phone and it only works 20% of the time. You would not use fingerprint authentication in this case. And if you would use it in this case, you would be in the high security zone. And maybe you need that. Maybe your phone, maybe you have a very security critical phone and which should not allow anybody uh, but the authenticated user in and it is worthwhile to even keep valid users out. So we have this, as usual, we have the security utility trade-off and where these two lines meet, the both error rates, uh, we have the equal error rate, which we talked about briefly before. This is usually the sweet spot where you want your authentication systems to operate. However, it is, as I've said, dependent on your context, on the applic actual application you're using. I want to briefly touch on some problems with biometrics. First, biometrics are often sensitive data. For example, fingerprint data, retina data, this is all sensitive data uh, according to the GDPR. Uh, the European Data Protection Law. This is not a bad thing, uh, since this means that in the EU, citizens' uh, biometric features are protected and it is actually safer to use them in the EU. However, if you are the data collector, if you are implementing biometric authentication, um, then you have to be especially careful and you need to provide uh, ex uh, like extra uh, secure uh, practices and Tom's, you know, technical and organizational measures uh, in order to protect these features since you are dealing with critical data. And you should uh, apply these extra critical measures in and outside of the EU. Next, we talked about universalness of biometric features and we talked about the obvious example like gate detection, uh, which is not suitable for people in wheelchairs. However, you also have to think about this when you're using retina scans, for example, because um, they might be attached at a height that is not reachable for wheelchair-bound people. So you always have to keep that in mind and think about fallback solutions. Finally, something that has been depicted in science fiction, uh, Demolition Man, uh, already decades ago, is the possibility that biometric authentication might lead to more violent crime. If a retina can be used to open critical doors, does it still work if the eyeball is cut out? And to be fair, I don't know of any such case outside of fiction, but it is something uh, definitely to keep in mind. So that concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. If you learned something, consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, share it, and leave a comment uh, regarding which topics you would like me to cover. And I see you in the next video. Stay safe.